Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is about a tutorial on how to set up InDesign portfolio using InDesign. This is a completely beginner tutorial. And here are the timestamp of the agenda that we're going to talk about. Feel free to move on to the section that you like. We're getting straight into it today. Now let's get started. So when you open InDesign, the first thing we're going to do is to create a file. So new file over here and you'll see this window. And the next thing we're going to do is to um, decide the size of the page. So if we look into this unit here, um, this is where you can select the type of the sizes. So we can go either millimeters and this is really up to you. You can go with A3, A2, and you can just Google the size um, of that pages. I'm specifically going with pixels because I want to present my portfolio in a screen mode. So I'm going to select the size that fits perfectly to the screen. And usually the pixel sizes on screen are 1920 pixels by 1080. So I'm going to select that. And let's go with the landscape as well. The next step is to set up how many pages. This you can change it later, but let's start with 10. And this icon here is where you can decide whether your pages are facing double-sided or single-sided. I can show you what I mean by this um, later as well, um, but I'm going to just unclick this for now. And then um, the margins, I'm just going to keep it as default. And if you scroll down here and go to um, preview, um, this is where you can see the size of and um, the pages layout. So if you're not sure how big your sizes are, you can check it here and then just go create. So now we have created your first layout. Um, let's say if you have changed your mind and you want to change the setup, sizes, margin, you can go up here to file, scroll down to uh, document setup, and you'll have this window again, um, which we set it up at the beginning. So you can change the number of the pages. You can actually do like a facing here. So if you click um, and then uh, if you go back, let's say to the pages here, this is what you see on the double um, sided, for example. Um, and then if you don't want this double sided, we go back to the page setup and you can just unclick. And if you do okay, um, it'll be single sided. Now let's talk about what we have on the right hand side, these panels here. Um, so these are some of the editing um, page panels. So you can see like, for example, property pages where you can edit um, pages and some of the library, which I don't really use. Um, but as a default, this should come when you set up the page. But if you don't see it, you can go up to this window and then this is where you can add all the um, panels. So depending on if you're looking for pages, um, or if you're looking for properties, you can basically select and you can start um, creating your own necessary panels here. So one of the important things to have a consistent portfolio is to set up a grid. So I'm just going to have a reference or inspiration of the how layout um, I want on my portfolio. I'm going to Google um, portfolio mockup. And I recently found this like free pick website, which is such a great inspiration for like a portfolio layout. But you can really go to like Pinterest or even like a Behance for your favorite um, inspiration images. I've personally found this one as really pretty and quite aesthetically pleasing. So I'm going to screenshot um, this graphic using snippet tool, um, which you can find on the window and just copy and paste it to the um, InDesign. And then you can basically move it here just so you can see all the time your layout references. So let's look at our um, inspiration layouts closely. So we want to create a guide or a grid. And if we look at these images, I can see that there is about like maybe four grid on each page. Um, so I want to replicate that into my layout. Um, so if you go up to the layout um, and then go to create guide, um, this is the window that you'll see. Um, and then basically the rows and columns, you can basically like choose which um, numbers you want, but I'm going to do like four and four. Um, and then for the gutter, you don't really need to change it, but it's the size between um, each grid. Um, if you're happy with it, um, you can just click OK and then close the window. 
and voila here we go so this grid is especially useful because now we can follow on each page um, a specifically guideline um, so it's not going to be like randomly placed um, but we can see that we've just set up a grid on just one page and what we should actually do is to use a, a master page so master page over here um, so master page is a page that we can use as a template um, for the rest of the page in our document. It's just easier because it sets up the layout in one go for all the pages. So once we're in a master page, we want to set up the grid again. So we go to layout, uh, create guide, and we're just going to type four and four again, as we did on the previous um, pages, and then just enter OK. Now, if you need more than one template, you can basically go to a parent, right click, and then go to create new parent. Um, and then we're just going to call it this size as B. Um, and then what you'll have is the second um, master page where you can add another grid, for example. We can go up to the layout again and then create a new um, grid. And then this time we can work with maybe like three grid and then um, press enter. So as a default, if you go back to your first page, um, all the pages will be a layout from your A master. But if you want specifically your B master into the page, you just kind of like drag from B master into like page two, for example. So now if we look at it, page two has a three grid and then page uh, one has a four grid and then page three has a four grid because that's the default um, template from the A master. So now I want to add a little bit more details and some kind of text into my um, template. So I go back to a master and I'm going to add a page number now. So once you're back on the page master, um, the first thing you want to do is create a text box. So you're going to create some kind of box here on the left bottom corner. And then you go up to type, you go to insert special character. Um, and then go down to markers and insert current page number. And now you have a text saying A and don't worry, this is just to represent the page number on the A master. Um, but I'm going to change some of the fonts. So if you go to property um, and then click here, you can basically choose your font. Um, I usually spend hours and hours just deciding on the font, but the easier decision you make, the the faster you can get this done. One of my favorite typo is the Franklin Gothic Demi, and I'm going to choose regular. Um, you can play around with the size of the text under um, the font as well. So I'm just going to maybe have it as 22 for now. And then if you go back to the type and right click and go to effect, um, this is where you can change the opacity. So like just the gradient of the typo, I'm going to set it to like 60. Um, so now it's a little bit grayer and it's not too bold. And now I want to make sure I have this page number copied to my B master as well. So I'm going to control C and copy, go to B master and then control F and lock, alt and V. And then you can kind of paste into the exactly same position. I use this command all the time to make sure everything is aligned. And if you're copying and paste on the same location, this is so helpful. So now if we go back to the page first, you'll see the page number and so as in the page two, you'll see number two on the page number. Just going back to the A master, I thought this was slightly big number. So I'm going to adjust the size of the text to a little bit smaller and control C and copy this again to make sure that page number also reflects same on the B master. So just delete this and then control F lock Alt V to make sure it's on the same um, exact location. And now I want to add a little more text onto the right hand side of corner. I think I'm going to write my uh, name here. So just create a text box and then change the font to this one here. And then I'm going to just type my name. Um, once I've done that, you can control um, the paragraph style. So I'm going to align to the right hand side here. And I'm also going to um, change the font side again. 
um, to make sure it's not overpowering. And then on here um, by the character, you can also change the spacing between the letter. Um, so you can either go 50 um, or actually going to do 100. That looks quite nice. Um, and then I'm also going to just right click and then change the opacity again. So transform and then effect transparency. Um, make sure it's 60 to um, make it similar to the page number. And I'm also going to add a little line detail here. So if you go to the left hand side toolbar and select the line tool, um, we can draw a line. And if you want to make this straight, you just press um, shift. So either shift or F and lock um, while you're drawing the line and it will be straight aligned. And to change the thickness of the line, you go to properties and then under appearances, um, you can just increase the stroke level. So if you go up to two, then it gets a little bit thicker and also going to change the opacity again. So go to uh, right click effect and then transparency, make sure this is 60. And here we have some kind of name and little graphic details. I'm going to copy this. So control C and copy and then put it into the top um, right hand side of the page as well. And this um, here, I'm just going to write portfolio. It's those little details that makes um, your portfolio more interesting. And then copy again to the left hand side. And here I'm going to write the ears of my uh, works. Now, when you're happy with everything, we need to copy all of this um, to copy into the B master. To copy multiple objects at the same time, you just hold shift or F and lock. Um, and then while you're holding it, you can just click everything that you want to copy and then control C to copy it and then go to B master and then um, control shift and alt and V to paste to the exactly same position. And now let's look at how this is looking on our first page. So if we go to the left hand side bar and all the way down um, where it says preview and you right click, you can see the setting of how you want to view your page. So we're currently on the normal, but if you change this view to preview, you can basically see everything without the grid. So how it's actually going to look on your page. So this is how it's looking. I'm pretty happy overall, but I think I'm going to go back to a master and just tweak here and he there. Um, I always do this. I don't know about you guys, but I'm so indecisive when it comes to layout. Um, so now I'm pretty happy with this layout. So the next step is to start creating a content on our pages. So now we're out of the uh, master page. This is actually the page one. And I'm going to create something that we see on the layout. So I want to have a big bold images in the middle and some big bold title on the top of the um, images. So let's go back to the first page. And the first thing I'm going to do is to use the rectangle tool. Um, and then create a box that is from around the half of the first grid to the other half of the last grid. And the box is automatically painted black because on over here, the filling tool is um, on black at the moment. So I'm just going to lower the opacity. So go to effect transparency and lower this down to about like 15. And it's just a placeholder box and we're going to add the images later. Then I'm going to go to the left hand side tool again for the text box and create some text here um, and then go to the property and just make sure that um, the font that is what you want and also adjust the sizing. One of the tricks to adjust the sizing without going to the font is to is you press Control and Shift or F lock together and then bring the mouse to the corner of this um, square that you see and then go wider or shorter. That's how you can control the sizing as well. Once we're happy with the sizing, I'm just going to add a little another detail um, by creating a rectangular tool. So under the portfolio texting, I'm going to add this little box um, filled with black color. Um, and then I'm going to copy control C to copy the text and control shift to adjust the scale of the sizes. And below the image, I'm going to write my name here. To zoom in, you can um, hold control and plus sign to go zoom. 
Um, and then I'm going to add some graphic details next to my name as well. And change the viewing to the preview mode to see how it's looking. Control minus to zoom out. Um, adjust here and there to see how this works. And if we go back to our inspiration images, I quite like this vertical texting detail as well. And also this dotted detail. So I'm going to add this on my layout. Um, so zoom out and then create um, a text vertically by copying control C um, and then move it over here in, um, to the right hand side of the image. And then you can simply um, hog over your mouse to the corner and then you'll see this like rotating arrow. So you can just click that and rotate 90 degrees. And I'm also going to make sure on the property under paragraph that this text is aligned to the right. And then here I'm going to add a year of my portfolio, so 2024. So now I want to add that dotting um, line detail. So I'm going to zoom out and go to um, the shape tool. So if you hover over your mouse to the um, rectangle tool and right click, you can select the um, ellipse tool. And to create a perfect circle, you can um, hold shift at the same time as creating a circle. That way it's going to be like a um, non-distorted circle. Um, and then you can fill the um, color to black as well. And then just zoom in. And then we're basically copying paste the same circle over and over. That's one way of doing. Um, this is helpful if you want to kind of control individual um, circles or like lines in a different distances. You have more, more control over this. Um, but it's going to take a long time. So the other way I can show it to you is just create a line. So hold shift and create a um, line straight. And then we can go to properties. Um, and then if you go to stroke, you see this line here. You just click under and there is like dotted um, version. So you click that and then just change the sizes. Once you're happy, um, we're just going to copy again and just um, make sure the the size between the lines are equal and going to duplicate until the end of the frame. And just go to the preview mode again and make sure you're happy with the overall layout. Just tweak here and there. And now final part of this tutorial is we're going to add an image from our file um, into this um, placeholder grade boxes that we created. So to insert a image to the box, we go to file and then we go down to place. And then you can simply go to your folder or file where you have saved your image that you want to insert. I'm going to use this image that I found on Pinterest for your FYI. It's not my work, but I'm going to use this just for the purpose of this tutorial. Once the image is inserted, um, the first thing we notice is that the image is um, on the lower opacity. So we can fix that by going to effects and um, transparency. Um, and then basically bring this opacity back to 100 and then in place, okay? And then if you want to um, play around with the sizes and scale of this image, we go to the property and you can go down to where it says frame fitting. And then there is an option to how you can frame your image inside. So if you click this one, you can simply um, fill your whole image into the box that you created. Um, you can double click on the image to kind of play around with the location of the image, um, scale it up or scale it down, um, depending on how you want to lay them out. Again, if you hold control while you're scaling up, you can simply um, scale the image without messing with the um, ratio of your image. The last thing you always want to do with the images is to put it on the high quality. So right click and go down to display performance and make sure you always click on the high quality displaying. This will make your image um, on the high resolution. And just spend the time to really adjust the layout um, so you're happy with the overall sizing and scaling. And I think we're done with it. Well done, guys.